Let's move on. You're watching a special edition of Q&A with Bill Gates. Our next question comes from uh, Arian Jahiri. In an episode of The Simpsons, a character made the following quote about the future when addressing cadets. The wars of the future will not be fought on the battlefield or at sea. They will be fought in space or possibly on top of a very tall mountain. In either case, most of the actual fighting will be done by small robots. And as you go forth today, remember always your duty is clear, to build and maintain those robots. <laughs> while, while such a quote is supposed to be satirical, do you think one day robots doing human tasks such as fighting wars will become reality? Well, we already have uh, the equivalent of, of robots doing a lot of things. And you know, if you look at how farming was done historically and how it's done today, you know, those are mechanical devices that are, are helping us out, out a lot. If you look at what a telephone operator used to do or what a, a typist used to do, uh, we are proceeding to replace all sorts of rote labor with robots. And this is a progression that uh, with vision, with speech recognition, with greater mobility, uh, will span to a lot of, a lot of new areas uh, and including, most... including warfare, which I think is the, the point that uh, that young man just made. And indeed, we have drones already, these uh, robots flying over uh, different countries, uh, assassinating people. Um, the future, according to futurologists who look at robotics, could be of tiny swarms, of insect-sized drones able to infiltrate people's houses and kill them. And do you think about the future? Do you think about these kind of things, how it might look? Well, today we have real insects invading people's homes. It's called malaria, and it actually does kill people. Um, so I, I have a strange obsession with the present. Um, I don't see robots as something that will lead to more war. Um, you know, we have to be careful to avoid war. In general, the trend uh, has been quite phenomenal in that regard. Uh, violence in general, uh, particularly of that type, less, less genocide. Um, you know, there's an unbelievable book about this by, by uh, Steven Pinker that really talks about the trend and how positive it's been. Uh, but robots are a good thing. Let's just use them for something other than war. Uh, next question is related to that. It comes from Jessica Lee. Do you ever think that artificial intelligence will ever surpass the human mind? And if so, how would humanity handle it? Well, it'd be very humbling. Uh, <laughs> you know, in certain respects, computers are far faster than we are today. Uh, you know, multiplying, uh, perfect memory. Uh, and it's this wonderful auxiliary tool that lets us communicate and create the ability to simulate things. Uh, you know, try out a new car design and see how that's going to work, or a new nuclear reactor, uh, look at how you would design drugs. Uh, computer simulation is this mind-blowing advance that will increase the rate of, of innovation. And so, you know, I do think that when the computer takes over certain tasks, uh, that'll, that'll be tough for us. It, it would be a long time before you're matching uh, the type of broad judgment that, that humans exercise in, in many different areas. Uh, so the when you were younger, you predicted this could happen, that carbon-based life forms might not be unique. The now, over time, could, over yeah. time, the machines look, are going to get very smart. Hmm. And, and uh, you know, like all modern things, we'll have to adjust to that. It's, it's kind of an embarrassment of riches problem as opposed to the uh, the opposite that many people worry about in the future. And so I do believe it's a, a solvable problem. Uh, you know, now we have to avoid climate change and other problems before we'll even have this one to worry about. Sure, but do you think artificial intelligence is doable? Absolutely. And how long do you think that could take? Mm, very hard to predict. Uh, at least five times as long as Ray Kurzweil says. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've got time for uh, one last question. This one comes from Andrew Zeng. Hi, Bill. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Um, what are your thoughts on cryonics? Is it something you have personally considered? As a few months ago on Reddit, uh, you mentioned that cheating death is on your bucket list, and you're probably the most viable candidate to beat death. Cheating death is on your bucket list, is that true? <laughs> no, I, I'd like to live a long time, uh, but I won't have myself chirogenically uh, preserved or cloned or anything of the kind. Uh, 
you know, life is a great thing, but uh, you know, you got to make room for the, the people who, who come after you. So I won't try and, won't try and cheat death, just pro, uh, delay it as long as possible. Well, thank you very much for this hour of your life. That is all we have time for. Please thank our guest, Bill Gates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a special thanks to the Pacific Friends of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria, and everyone here at the University of New South Wales, including this great audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. You were terrific. <laughs> Please join us next Monday for another Q&A on our regular 9.30 time slot. Until then, good night. <laughs>